Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today's project is a tea cake candle holder, which I've made from strips of mahogany and cut out on a template on the scroll saw. It's a very simple project. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, if anybody would like a copy of the design, uh, my email is in the description down below. Drop me an email and I will forward you on the PDF for free. Uh, anyway, enjoy the video guys and I will catch you at the end. See you later, bye. Okay, so to start this, I've just got the uh, strips of mahogany. I'm just nibbling off the end bit there. It's a little bit damaged, and I've got my stop block set to about 12 and a half inches. I'm going to glue up three boards to make uh, three of these strips. I need to make a board, and I'm going to make two boards so I can knock out four of these candle holders. Um, so I'm just going to do all the glue ups together now. So the bark lamps, I'm just going to apply um, some glue to the edge of two of the boards, spread it on with the spatula. And a little bit of grease proof paper or wax paper in between the two means I can glue up the two boards at the same time. It's just going to save a little bit of time in the long run. And you don't need a lot of pressure here, you just want to see the, the glue start to squeeze out of the joints. Don't put too much on it. And once you've got squeeze out along all of the, the seams, then you know you're good to go. Just give that a quick wipe down. And I'm just checking now to make sure that the boards have sat flat on the, on the bar clamps. And I'll leave that overnight. And while that's drying, I'm into the house now and I'm... Uh, I'm making up the, the cutting template with the compass so that initial circle is at uh, 40 millimetres and then it's 10 millimetres out and then I just made concentric circles to make the overall design and then I'm going to colour in now all the bits that I'm going to cut out later on the scroll saw And once that's done, it's back out to the garage, so a little trip through the house. Grabbing the keys. And off to the workshop. So just releasing the boards now from the clamps and uh, we'll part these off and there we go, job's done and we're going to give that a quick going over on the uh, the surface plane and I've got the beds raised up so it's just barely a little bit coming off and that's just to clean up the glue squeeze out and to get those boards perfectly flat like I said doing the two boards at the same time I don't have to come back and do it later on And a quick run through the thickness set, uh, and it's about here that I realised I forgot to turn on the dust extractor. And again, it's just a quarter of a turn, it's just a little bit coming off each board, just to clean those up and make sure that those two surfaces are nice and parallel. Not essential, but if you've got the gear, why not? And um, with a bit of spray glue, I'm just going to spray that onto the template, and I'm going to get my board. And we're going to glue that down onto one of the boards now. And trimming off the excess with my pocket knife. Just makes it a little bit easier to work with later. Well, first job is to get the 40mm force in a bit, which is the world's dr um, dullest drill bit. 
and I'm going to hog out that centre circle. That's where the candle's going to sit later on. And this did take a while because that drill bit is really blunt. And I have turned down the drill press to its lowest setting. That did take a while. And I'm just going to give that a clean up with the hoover. And go over to the bandsaw. I'm just going to take off that little bit of edge. Give me some room to work with. Back to the drill press. And we're going to drill um, holes here for the scroll saw blade to fit through later on. And my scroll saw is a pin blade scroll saw so I'm having to drill 6mm holes. That takes care of that to make sure that the uh, the blade with the pins go through. And now finally back at the scroll saw. And it's the first time I've used a scroll saw for a while and I've got a brand new blade and I've got a very fine tooth blade on there today. I'm um, not quite sure on the TPI on this one, um, but it gives a really nice smooth finish. Very little tear out. And I'm just going to hog out all of those black bits. Now the reason I'm so close to that is because the, um, the fan blower that blows away the dust has decided to stop working. The little valve on the inside has got hard and has broken. So uh, it doesn't blow away the dust, so I'm having to blow the dust away gently as I'm working. I'd say this process probably took about 20 minutes all in all. I kept dropping the blade down inside, which doesn't help. I'm just heading off now to the last two. Try my best now to stay as close to that line as possible. Just getting into those corners now to give a nice, a nice crisp finish. Scorso is probably one of my most underused tools in the shop, but I do like using it, I must admit. And put it in the vise, and it's on with a little bit of sanding. I've got a little file there, just to knock off some of those hard edges off the first cut. And then I'm going to come back now with 240 sandpaper, and just sand off all of those holes. And once that's done, I can move over to the bandsaw again. And now I'm going to go. I'm going to cut out this the final shape, and I'm going to stay as close to that line as possible, but not on the line. I'll sand down to it later. But where the two circles and the outer circles meet in the middle, where we are now, I'll go right as close as I can to the um, to the line there, because I won't be able to sand in there later. But for the outer edges, I'll stay away from the line. I'm just coming in now to tidy up those joining areas. And set the disc sander now, and I'm just rounding off those edges now, back down to the line, and that gives me my final shape. I've got a, a small round over bit in the uh, router table now and I'm just rounding over the edges. And to get the paper off I've grabbed the heat gun. That transfer has probably been on now for about a good hour, it's going to be really sticky. So I've got the heat gun that's going to melt off the glue a little bit. Uh, and it leaves us, it takes off a lot of the residue as well. So it's a lot easier to sand off later. It took about a minute. And just getting the knife blade there just to peel off the uh, the transfer. I'm 
once that's all off I can hit it off I can start sanding now with the uh, 240 sandpaper and I'll give 240 and then 320 and I'll knock off the edges on those corners by hand get rid of some of the burn marks burn marks were a result of the um, used sandpaper on the discs um, Danish oil now with the paintbrush getting in amongst all of those little holes and I'm going to give that a good liberal finish and then once that's dry I can move on to a couple of coats of spray lacquer it's going to get about four or five coats of the spray lacquer with sanding at uh, 400 grit in between and there's the first coat Okay, so that's it for this one guys, thanks very much for watching, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, um, it turned out really nice, I really like the finish on this one, the, the spray varnish has gone on really nice, um, and I think it looks really, really decent. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, if you did give it a thumbs up and a like and share it with your friends, that would really help me out a lot, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so and invite you to hit that notification bell as well, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, that's it for me for this one guys and I will see you on the next one. Take care. See you later. Bye. Is one of these. It is a well called. We'll do that again shall we. Hi guys welcome back to the shop. Today's project is a little tea coat. Uh, little... Guys welcome back to the shop. Uh, today's project is a quick simple little tea coat. Um, I have one of these called.